Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 306 with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I am your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode number 306. So each week we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. We also do a quick recap of our weekly live video show, This Week in Hospitality Marketing, which also airs every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, along with our Clubhouse Club Room Hospitality Marketing, which airs every day Monday through Thursday at noon and Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So our tools for review this week, uh, we have mentioned two of these in previous occasion for similar reasons, but not for exactly the reason we were referring to them today in our Technique of the Week. But these tools all have a similarity to a value proposition that we have expressed in other ways, but now uniquely for today's environment of what we're dealing with. The first tool without fanfare to discuss is Sniply.io, S-N-I-P-L-Y.io. Sniply.io is an interesting tool for functionality's sake because it allows you to, for lack of a better way of saying, piggyback on other people's good content. What do we mean by this? Well, as we know, we're not the only providers of our own content. And as such, other people's content, say from CBBs, TDCs, Chamber of Commerces, local influencers, what have you, share great content. It may not also be discovered by everyone, and more importantly, may not be discovered by our own audiences of our own followers. So if we can take those content pieces and say, wow, this is a really good piece of information and share it with our audiences, then in turn, that helps the value of what we're offering to our own audiences. It also shares great content. And most importantly, it validates our value proposition to our audiences. So what does this Snipply do for that? Well, that means that it adds a little banner on the bottom of us that can have a call to action for us should they want to go over and find out more information about us. Um, More details on its functionality uh, usage at this point, but know that it can do that and most importantly, track the engagement associated with it because of our sharing it. So where the content speaks for itself and we're sharing great content, we're also piggybacking on a call to action for ourselves on that same content. And we'll get to why that's important to us here in just a minute. The second tool is app.bitly.com, bit.ly.com. This tool has been used by me and has been referred by me several, several times because of its great usability. This takes very long URL, okay, uh, those address parameters that you have, uh, and shortens them down into something you can customize. Um, and with all of the additional UTM parameters that we add to our links so that we can track them for purposes of knowing where this traffic came from should somebody click on it, this allows us to shrink it down to a more usable, rememberable, easier to type for our users platform. It also provides our ability to track through the usage of these bit.ly as well, which we'll also get to. Now, the third tool we're going to throw into this is the more robust tool that I use. Not that bit.ly can't do this, but I use Jot URL way more than I use bit.ly for these advanced techniques to it. But Jot URL, J-O-T-U-R-L.com, profoundly useful tool. It not only can create trackability while shortening the URLs for usability, but also it can create a trackability of call to actions and also uh, usabilities, UTM parameters, uh, crossovers, and as we're all of three of these are being put together in combination, the ability to get data as to their usage. So our three tools that our discussion this week are snipply.io, bitly.com, and joturl.com, which brings us to the real reason why we put these together, which is our technique of the week. Now, for this week's hospitality technique. So our technique this week is old, new ways to gather first-party data. With all of the distraction of this tsunami of demand for so many markets where people are just trying to exist logistically and maintaining uh, some semblance of service profile for all the guests that they are selling to and of course our rate 
amplification uh, corresponding to the demand that we're feeling to market, there's very little attention being drawn towards future competitive marketing. And most importantly, the progression of dissemination of first party and third party cookie data. Now, we've had this discussion on the podcast many times. We have it persistently on our live conversations in uh, Hospitality Marketing Club Room and also on our live show on Fridays. This change of what's happening as, as, as fast as it's going, it, the slow progression of it is also making it not a featured interest or concern for most people who aren't even interested in their own marketing at this point because they feel marketing is tied to, to, to immediate sales only. And for that reason, they feel that they're, uh, they don't need it because they can't handle the business that they have and they're, they're missing the point of what marketing is for. That being said, this deterioration of data that is happening, this reduction in third-party data being shared uh, with us to know where business traffic is coming from and where is it going to after us in this attribution string modeling as to the progression of interactions that in combination create the transaction that we're looking for, we are being slowly blinded from resources that we used to take for granted that aren't collaborating with us anymore or with each other anymore. And then we're gonna become very, very reliant on places like Google because of their first party cookie status on all the websites. Remember their free giving away of their analytics program, Urchin for those even farther back. Um, They are considered first party cookies. So they're gonna have this omnipotent omnipresence about themselves to know where traffic was engaged prior to coming to your website, what they did on your website, obviously, because they're going to be sharing that data anonymously with other servers, and also where they went to after your website. Of course, they're only going to share that if you're actively financially engaged with them, aka advertising, for that data to even be more robust and more particular granular ways for them to be used. So as this is going on, this progressive blinding of our ability to look at outside data outside of our own, it becomes even more important as to getting more data for ourselves, our own first party cookie influence and data, tracking and trafficability. Now, first forefront of this is engagement with our own websites. We, of course, have access to the data of what people do on our websites, probably provided by Google and or Adobe or other service platforms. Um, But that's it. That's ours. Anything up to coming to our website, anything after going leaving our website is really to the whims of other data sources, which brings us to our tools and why we were suggesting them in collaboration today. Sniffly.io, bit.ly.com, and JotURL allow you to create a continuance of in additional data aggregation by creating links that are shareable and they get disseminated and shared with others and those get shared with others and on and on and on in that expansion of virility of shareable. Um, It gives us a sense of who's interacting with our content beyond the confines of our website's ability of metrics. This tells us, these platforms tell us who clicked and more information about where they clicked and more information about what they did by clicking and did they interact with aspects that we offered for them and is there a way based on that that we can retarget them and use that data more beyond just our websites in the interaction of accumulating more interactive of, of related to content. Now, obviously, Sniffly.io is a unique feature where we can we get the benefit of other people's content based on our shareability of that content and the people's interactions with that. That still means they have to be interacting with us as an audience. So it's not as if we're out in the public venues of it, but consider that virility of shareability. If people like what they first in first person found from us and share it to their audiences and that audience shares it to another audience and that audience shares it to another audience, now we're four steps away from the original source, which is us, but we're still able to successfully track the engagements associated with that sharing of content, which provides us a great resource of data that we are, as I mentioned earlier, slowly getting blinded to with this reduction in third-party cookie data that is being shut off by so many platforms like Google, like Apple, and beyond. So our technique this week, 
old, new ways to gather first-party data in relationship to our tools of review this week. And that brings us to our... Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So news and show review. Um, lots of fun. It's always, it, it's turned into the, the live show at the end of the week. Uh, visual, the video live show that we do on Fridays at 11.30 a.m. Eastern has really turned into a reflection of a continuance of conversations that we've had in our clubhouse rooms for the course of the week. Now, it doesn't dictate the content in Friday because we have a wonderful curated list that Robert Cole from Rock Cheetah shares with us for those who want to connect and follow that free listing of information that is incredibly relevant for the week of. You can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Rock Cheetah, all lowercase, no space. See, there you go. The advantage of URL shorteners. Uh, and from that gives us context to some of the discussions that we had. Um, we did talk about from our discussions of Clubhouse and also beyond, the continuing effect of current pricing. We all shook our heads in disbelief as to some of the prices that hotels are commanding uh, for high demand markets. Uh, $1,000 type rooms now at this point. And the sad part of it is that the service related to the prices are despairing. Um, you're not getting the full service of what the hotel usually offers in most cases. And so you're paying exponentially larger just have access to exponentially lesser services and that includes housekeeping that includes food and beverage facilities or open venues within the, the ancillary revenue opportunities at the hotel that may not be in full function and form um, and yet you're paying such a premium price to be able to be there simply because the demand of market is pushing the revenue managers to believe that they have this opportunity to command this kind of rates. And we've kind of exacerbated it in our own perspective and through our discussion, which, by the way, our co-host, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't get to this, our co-host of the of the week this week was Mr. Dean Schmidt with uh, Basecamp Meta, Meta Search Marketing, and Ms. Adele Gutman with AdeleGutman.com, which is Reputation Management Marketing. Um, so we had a very lively dialogue between the three of us about this where... We understand that revenue managers are, are doing what revenue managers are meant to do, which was optimization of demand for rate opportunity. And so they are commanding higher rates. And of course, until they get a resistance of the rate, they are going to continue to press rate. And from that, we're getting these astronomically high rates, uh, but at the detriment of lesser service. And sometimes, unfortunately, selling past because of the increased tsunami of demand, past their levels of service so that they are actually buying into a lesser quality service environment product and which only creates long-term frustration, disappointment, and kills the advocacy that they may have experienced bringing them to the hotel if with a future tense of whether they want to come back to the hotel, which was really the core of our discussion to this, is the damaging effect on long-term value relationships, lifetime value persistence of, of frequency of a guest returning and so forth is profound. The negative reviews that most hotels that used to, to be very shining in their positive reviews is, um, is, is a long-term scar that is something that may never truly get healed in its completeness again in the future tense. As the saying always goes, trust is easy to, is, is is, is hard to acquire and incredibly easy to lose. And that's what a lot of hotels are doing. Um, they may think that they're doing well, like, hey, you know, we're the martyr here. We've been suffering for 12 to 15 months with no business. You understand why we can charge as much as we're charging because of the demand that you're asking us to is an understandable quantity. But there is a pushback that's beginning to come into our society of a frustration of you got to be kidding me because your hand is out more for more money and along with everybody else. We talked about about the fact that there were some flights that were listed from hub to hub, Dallas to Atlanta, on major carriers that were over $700 for them to fly. And if they wanted to do a two-stop, like a Chicago-Philly thing, it was only five. It was only $200 less than $500 for the major inconvenience of doing something like that. So for all those reasons, that cost and rental cars were before you can rent a car for a month for a small amount of money, uh, a couple hundred dollars, so to speak, uh, during the pandemic where everyone was dying to get business. Now, uh, as brought up by Adele, it could be $1,300 for five days, and it's just not worth it. Uh, so you add all that up, and of course, we have other costs that are going up, gas and things like this, and then you're going to hotels, and you're paying amazingly premium rack rates to stay at a hotel, and you're getting diminished service quality and diminished uh, amenities. So we're creating a bit of a perfect storm of long residual uh, pushback to the lifetime value proposition that we as hoteliers might have enjoyed with from some of these people by doing this to our, our loyal guests. Um, 
We did talk about, are we driving more business to Airbnb and VRBO by doing this? Here, a hotel is offering and asking for $700 to $1,000 a night in a hotel room with re- reduced amenities. And then over here on the other side is an Airbnb. You get to buy a whole house at $300 a night. Hmm. Well, I'm already used to you know the fact that I have reduced housekeeping, which is the same as having an Airbnb or something where you're doing your own cleaning and so forth. So what's the loss factor? Well, you're saving money at that point. So we might actually be driving business from our own models into other venues of opportunity like Airbnb and VRBO. Um, we also talked a little bit about how uh, Airbnb, uh, from an article that Robert shared with us, is spending a tremendous amount of money, millions of dollars, to make nightmares go away, meaning they're, they're horror stories of things that have happened from people's engagement with Airbnb that they don't want to have as a negative reflection. They want to represent themselves in the, we're the place you want to go over and get your family reunions. You're, you're, we're the place you can share common space without having to share it with other people, and on and on and on. So, uh, they're spending a lot of money to make sure that all the ugly stories don't get out by settling for them. So it was an interesting article that uh, it was in the show notes and will be in the show notes for you for to come to the podcast of exactly uh, what they were doing uh, via the article for it. Um, we also did uh, a little bit of reflection on something we talked about months ago that has become unfortunately painfully un- uh, too too true too often and that is the pent up anger associated with travel uh, we talked many months back about the a emergence of people's travel that there's going to be a lot of anger about it because there's a lot of resentment for having been cloistered in for so long and uh, the example I gave that seems to be all more true than not is somebody's um, over the top response to having run out of coffee in the lobby the free coffee in the lobby um, that our staff have to be well trained to know that it's not anything to do with the coffee being out it's the frustration of the accumulation of so many things that just added to the list of things that they were doing that created the issue um and for that reason to know how to to de-escalate that conversation although be it now in the news there is uh, the horror of of guns and uh their usages of it and mass shootings to a scale that we've never witnessed to and and in just this society of anger and fighting there's fights on beaches there's fights in restaurants there's fights at venues that are doing events people are just angry at everything and they're taking it out on each other and this is a reflection of the pent-up anger of what we've gone through and uh, our transition process that from from what we were shut down and and cloistered to interactive and self-centered in lots of ways so having to deal with that and and how do we deal with that as an industry was a, a lot of our dialogue with that as well um we talked about the disparities of modern marketing models, you know, the EU versus the American model, where America tends to go for the self-sufficiency of direct channel communication. People's discovery, so our websites are built to be more efficient to help people come to us directly to understand what it is that we're selling compared to say the european model which works more on the wholesaler market that people drive business to hotels so hotels tend to focus more on their their operations logistics logistics and not so much the awareness of selling so people can buy directly from them and how does that transition between different markets here even domestically where some hotels may not have the means and capability of self-promotion self-marketing how do they adopt and share and ride on the coattails perhaps it's a better way of saying it with other organizations for their market in which they can be represented like cbb's tdc's uh chamber of commerce's and the like so we had fun conversations about it um we talked about the, remembering the joy and the magic of travel, the the happiness that you can give and share and promote in quality of service that if, if you're overselling your service profile of your hotel, you can't do simply to sell a room because you can, okay, for a large amount of money, which you can, but not provide the level of service that even warrants the value of even buying the room, let alone at the exploited price, which unfortunately is being done. Um, so that and the, again, referral back, kind of a closure to it, the referrals of, of the reviews on platforms as to how deteriorating they're going, how hard it is to make up for lost ground, that if you're well known for great service and then now, unfortunately, you're not providing the same level of service that you were applauded for, the negativity that is being created by that, how damaging and deep the scar is and how long it will take to 
somehow make amends for all the, the negativity that's being shared in reviews. So that was our open discussions that we had. There's one article I do want to share in the news function that it was is very interesting, and I, I hope you take the time to look at it. It's from Instagram.com. It's actually from their about at Instagram.com, and it is, that is the shedding more light on how Instagram works. And what I found interesting about this is I take Instagram as being a mimic in some ways of Facebook, uh, a mimic of personalization, really. Um, Facebook is more about shareability of it. And, and even though you can do amazing targeting things with its advertising, it's more of a, a broad stroke conversation. Yeah, it's not a, as personal. If you think about voices, you have first person, third person, third person narrative, first person interactive, on and on and on. Um, Facebook is more of a third person and or narrative. Uh, it's not a personal as I'm talking to you as it is I'm talking to everyone. So it's more of a third person in that sense. Instagram, I feel, is more of a platform that says I'm talking to you. And, and that you can be a defined audience. It doesn't have to be the personalization to one-on-one. It's more of a I to you all, you, your, them, they, uh, in, in the sense of uh, a defined audience. Because Instagram is more about the in, uh, more interactive dialogue of content than it is about the uh, broadcasting announcement aspect of the dialogue. Um they talk about how to they rank the different aspects of their interactions with posts versus feeds or stories versus all these things. Um, they 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 break it down into different ones, which is all within this article, which is really interesting about how they rank feeds and stories. Information about your post is a key criteria. Information about the person who posted is a key criteria, uh, and the activity of you and the activity of those that are watching you and the history of your interactions based on the people that you're interacting with at the latest post you had on so they try to take in these modifiers to determine how the content that you are sharing gets shared to those that might be interested in it what i read from this that i thought was very fascinating is that instead of facebook's diminishment of whether or not what you do actually gets shared unless you're paying for the exposure to jumpstart that instagram still seems to be a strong territory that by merit of content and merit of organic content and merit of individualized content perspective it can help dictate the presentation of that content in front of people that algorithmically you know calculations of all these variables that they take into account will put you in front of so i find that promising that i will take a stronger look at maybe identifying better more uh, more defined aspects of the things that they've outlined in this article uh, as to something that um, I can expand the Instagram ad campaigns to be more than just a secondary aspect of advertising of targeting a specifically based on the engagements that Facebook first provided and then tailoring those into the more the Instagram content uh, specializations. I might let Instagram kind of be on its own a little bit more in the forefront and not a tool of reflection to Facebook's efforts. Not that I'm duplicating the postings, but just refining the engagement from Facebook helps me define the engagement that I expect on Instagram. I think I might invert that and sometimes at least multiply and multivariant test it and see what happens. So, again, the article was shedding more light on how Instagram works from Instagram itself, which is also on um, Robert Cole's list that he gave us, which is always his newsletter that he sends out each week, which you can sign up for at bit.ly forward slash rock cheetah, all lowercase, no space. Um, So that is it. That is our review of news and show. And remember, you can find us on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, TuneIn. In podcast list goes on and on and on. Actually, thirty nine platforms and counting. You can even find us on Amazon's Alexa, Google Assistant, and or Siri. Just simply ask to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast, and you will be playing the latest episode of the Hospitality Marketing Podcast. And no matter which one you may use, if you like the show, please rate us and leave a comment. That gives us great feedback as to what it is that we're providing for content. If you like it, or if you have questions, or even suggestions, I answer each and every email that comes from that. Uh, it also helps others who may not have discovered us find us because of the engagement that you're creating with us uh that all works on all the podcast platforms um and of course if this is your first time hearing us you can subscribe to our show on the platform you found us on uh or these other platforms if you have a preference to other ones and you just happen to find it on another one uh also as a reminder you can go over and get the archive of all of our previous podcasts at hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash podcast as well as hospitality channel.tv 
but there's an on-demand function of the entire playlist on there as well for the Hospitality Marketing Podcast, along with the Hospitality Meta Search Podcast, the Hospitality Sales Podcast, Hospitality Revenue Management Podcast, and Hospitality Reputation Management Podcast. All those podcasts are represented on their own channels at the Hospitality Channel. TV. So, uh, also, please do not forget about our live video talk show, the one that we just reviewed, uh, that you can join and participate in every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time called This Week in Hospitality Marketing, The Live Show. And for that, you can simply go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. That's an archive of all of our previous shows. Or, as I mentioned before, we're moving all of our shows over into the platform of hospitalitychannel.tv. There you'll find an on-demand series of all of our historical archives based on year we're breaking those up into content we're basing them up on co-hosts we're breaking breaking up in lots of different ways you'll see that in our tv lineup uh, that we do 24 7 the only uh, 24 7 uh, tv channel dedicated to hospitality that's the cha- hospitality channel tv we also have our on-demand pay for subscription service where we expand a lot more content and you can get to watch our live show live on your own tv and for that you can go to talk travel.tv there you can sign up or you can be on roku google apple or amazon uh, and i say that as apple tv and so forth um, that you can go on and just download the channel and watch it from there and if you want your additional content is a four ninety nine a month prescription uh, prescription huh, subscription that you can sign up for for the additional enhanced content that will be uh, more behind the curtain on some stuff both food and beverage hotels and all the like anything hospitality and hospitality business that's what the channel is for so uh, and also you can get it on your Apple and on your Google uh, iOS you know phones and uh, tablets and plat- iPads and the like so we are literally everywhere including YouTube channel and everything else and we simulcast on all the social platforms every week as well so long and long and long my name is lauren gray thank you for the privilege of your time and look forward to talking to you next week you have been listening to this week in hospitality marketing the podcast show 306 brought to you by hospitality digital marketing and in support of the hsmai hospitality sales and marketing association international all right reserved copyright 2021